Welcome to Pegging Coffee Talk. If you enjoy our content, please consider donating and following our socials. Now, here are your hosts, Lady Alba and Lord Knight. All right. Welcome to Pagan Coffee Talk. Um, today, we're going to talk about sex magic. Yay. Oh, boy. <laughs> so I think it would be wise for us to, I guess, first kind of set the parameter for what sex magic is. Right. It's such a, I mean, it's such a talked about topic. It's people obsess about it, too, yes. which I think is so funny. <laughs> You know, it makes you wonder, how much can you actually talk about sex magic? A lot. I mean, a lot. <laughs> let's be honest. Like, so really, I guess the, the, the okay, setting the parameters. So <laughs> let's start at the beginning. Technically. The tip. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Let's start with the tip. Uh, just the tip. If it, it, My personal feeling is that all sex is sex magic. But yeah, it's unavoidable. Yes, it is what it is <laughs> now. OK, maybe not all sex, but if it's two consenting people. Right. And they have any emotional connection whatsoever to one another to one another. Yes, there's going to be magic. Yes, you're creating magic. There's a reason why <laughs> there's eight billion love songs written about this very topic. Right. And the Kama Sutra. Oh, and my God. <laughs> <laughs> and. I think that, right, so if the sex results in its ultimate pur purpose yeah. beyond, you know, orgasm, if it results in creation. It's magic. Well, yeah. I mean, then it's definitely magic. You know, yeah. Now, now, I think. Now you're talking about the blessings of the gods, but. Right. Now, I think if you have bad sex, <laughs> right? No. That's not going to happen because if one or both parties has separated mentally right. and emotionally from what's happened. No, no, you know, I mean, I always kind of laugh when comedians are like, you know, she's sitting there going, hurry it up. I got laundry to do. I'm not, you know, we can't be here all day. I, I always think that's hilarious because I think everyone has experienced that. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, let's get this over with. But <laughs> yeah. But. Okay. And then. And then we have the chemical composition, Positions. right? All of the things that happen, the dopamine, the serotonin, the, yeah. you know, the, holy crap. That alone flooding our systems. Yep. There's, it's euphoric. There's a high. There's, you know, well, I mean, there's a reason why. So I always love this. The French call an orgasm the tiny death. Yes. Yeah, because there's that you, literal out of body. I can't move. I can't function. Well, no. I, in in actuality, for guys, yeah, if we did not have all our pleasure centers going off, we would be in agonizing pain. Mm. Every last muscle we have in our whole entire body <laughs> tensions <laughs> to the absolute <laughs> extreme. That's really funny. All right, it's, it's like having a whole body cramp. Right. Right. To right. A right. Extent. Right. Well, I think that I mean I think that's both yeah. genders. Yeah. I mean not everybody achieves it to that extent. Damn, but yes. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I mean, you know, the little death is is always I think funny as hell um that that's a, a well, thing or a way of viewing it. What well, is this the real reason why in the world sex magic is really one of the most potent is is because we are getting slightly close to death. I don't know about that. I, I quite, well, uh, here, uh -huh. so here's my thought on it. I think sex magic can potentially be like people's response to drugs. You're always chasing the high. Right. You're always chasing after or trying to recreate the best sexual experience you've ever had. Right. And that's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, just like drug addicts, that's dumb. All right. Why would we do that? It's the reality is it either happens or it doesn't. And I think couples especially sometimes try to force, force? it. Yes. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Why would you? Why? Why? Because uh -uh. if you don't have that sort of connection. Wow. Yeah. How do you think forcing it's going to. But people do it. Right. And I mean, I've I've had plenty of situations in my adult life where I've met someone where 
sexually that chemistry was it's just like you i i'm the one to just go let's be friends and just, <laughs> you know because you might be a really great person otherwise and you get along really well and you but but why force that if it's not there mm, got me i mean you're not gonna have those moments of magic not in that situation not really i mean and you might make a baby Maybe. But again, there's always going to be something missing. Now, the process of actual sex magic, Mm. uh, purposely not doing a mishap spell, like I'm sitting there pleasuring myself and thinking of an ex or something via a phone call. Well, okay, that's an interesting point. So, like, part of what spawned this conversation was a... Facebook group, uh, right. a witch, witch's Facebook group, where a person asked the question, if I keep fantasizing about someone while masturbating, would they be able to tell? Then, and they go on to say how their ex ended up Colin. right reaching out to them a few days later. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's sex magic. All right. It's a but form th- of it. I don't think they know that you sat there and used sex magic mm, per se. Right. They just know that they wanted to contact you. Mm, yeah, yeah, agreed. Okay, agreed. okay. Or, I mean, they might have a twinge. Might. Right? I mean, there's always, like, a little, like, huh? Well, huh? Huh? You know, I mean, maybe. That's very <laughs> plausible. But, no, I don't think that that person is a, is going to be aware of the fact that you want to jump their bones. Right. <laughs> and... You know, any time, right? Any time we obsessively think about someone or something, or we are potentially drawing it to us, which is on another topic altogether. Why ruminating is so poor a, a practice? Because if you're obsessing about something negative, you're just bringing more of it to you into your life. Yeah, even though you're you don't want it. So here we have the potential opposite. So, but here we have more like an accidental right spell. Yeah, kinda, yeah. yeah. From from the way she's talking about, it, that's what I would see this now to do an actual full on one. My understanding, you go like a few months, or as long as you can without. I mean, you have you know this is where yes, Kama Sutra, tantric no, sex said, practices. I mean, it really all again, it's all about uh, ex- enhancing. And extending that. Right. Extending the pleasure, enhancing the pleasure, making the connection with the other person deeper. I mean, here's my, me personally. I mean, oh my God, I can't lick, right? Okay. All okay. right. <laughs> Oof. Okay. Confessions on the podcast. It's, uh, oh, oh, it's Pagan Coffee Talk After Dark. That's what, <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing now. Okay. That's fun. Um, the, <laughs> sorry. I tickle me. Um, I have had encounters with people that, I mean, yeah, sex magic has happened spontaneously. That's always really wild. But it's not a forced thing. I, I feel like a couple of things happen in sort of a line. One is... The the rhythm, literally, the right. physical rhythm, I don't know. I mean, something happens where it becomes very, very uh, meditative. Right. And then you have the emotional connection. You have the willingness, the, 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 the right, putting down your barriers. No right. walls, no mental blocks, no nothing. No thoughts. No. Other than the moment. Exactly. And I've had a situation where um, this was probably one of the most wild I've ever had. And this was with my husband. I effectively walked into his meditation during sex. (laughs) And I was like, where the fuck are we? It was one of those like wild moments. I was like, this is not mine. This, yeah, like I was well aware of the fact that he let me in yes. to his happy place, right. right? His And I was like, what the hell? And afterward, I was like, what? Where? 
And then he explained it to me. Yeah. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's my room. That's where I right. go. With that. Yeah. And I was like, holy crap. That <laughs> was cool. <laughs> um, well, see, now people don't understand. Like, if you meditate, mm. then have sex, it will force you to go deeper into a Correct. Unfortunately, it's Correct. very dangerous to do because oh, you be cut. You you'll you'll walk in the middle of traffic if you're not paying yeah, attention. Absolutely, and I mean, and I don't even know if that was his. That could have very well been what had happened. He may have been meditating prior. My, I don't know. I know. Um, but it was never something forced. Now, no. Kama Sutra and Tantra, from what I understand, it's um. Well, I mean, I hate to make it so mundane, but it's it you you build it up like exercises, like you work different breathing techniques, different right. uh, stretching. There's a yoga component, different exercises that you do with the person that you're with, and some of them are non-sexual in right. nature, purely to improve the connection that the two of you have. Right. And then thus later resulting in better sex. I mean, and that seems, I, f I think that's healthy. I, I don't see a problem with no, that. No, not at all. Now, I think when people are, uh, shall we say, dabbling in that in groups, ooh, that can get, mm, yeah, that can get messy real fast. I mean, uh, I'm not giving my polyamorous people, you know, a hard time. I mean, you do you. You do you, and but not everybody. I don't think everybody can do a polyamorous relationship. No, no, not everyone can. And then when you bring sex magic to that equation, I almost want to say the magic gets confused. Yes. Again, it's, it's, yeah. that, it's hurting cats. Right. Well, because the sexual act is one plus one and equals one. one. Yeah. Right. So when you have three or four, or it's like, where am I going? What am I doing? Do <laughs> we, can't, we can't join these numbers. No. It's, or it's very difficult to do. Or it spreads you way too thin. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's, you know, I would, I would definitely be cautious there. I don't know if that's something I would engage in. Now, it doesn't mean that if you're, you know, again, if you are polyamorous or, you know, you have, fine, but, but I wouldn't bring sex magic no. into the equation. What, it, what are your thoughts on s sex magic versus fertility magic? One is to improve fertility. The other one's used for whatever. Mm. So you don't, they're not one and the same for you. No. Yeah. All right, because I, no, I can see you using sex magic to cast a fertility spell. Oh, that's interesting. Using them, joining you, them together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now that makes sense to me. Well, sure, because I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember this is many, many years ago. A close friend of mine's sister was was trying to get pregnant, and you know, they were having a really hard time conceiving and, you know, and, and, uh, her, her doctor was like, well, how often are you having sex? And I mean, it was kind of an abysmal number. And, and the doctor just went, I'm, listen, you got to triple or quadruple these efforts because thinking about being fertile and getting, getting into the act, it, right. If you're not having sex constantly, right. You're not I, improving your odds here. Right. I mean, because there's the, there's the odds for humans. We, mm -hmm. You have to sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I always say it. I think it's so fascinating, right, that as a society, we ha we, the, the fact that accidental pregnancies even happen. That it's, blows my mind. It does. It blows my mind too. Now, not not in the sense, not in the judgmental sense. None no. of that. It's just when you think about all the things that have to align for a human being to get pregnant, it's miraculous that it even happens. That it even happens. Yeah. And then, of course, I guess therein lies Murphy's law: <laughs> is that when you're careless or you're, or it's not, you know, right. the gods, well, let's be honest, they're tricksters, right? Yeah. It's, that's sometimes the, the key there. And, and then on the other hand, you have people that so desperately want a baby. Right. And it 
doesn't happen, whether it be physiology or otherwise, right? Something's up and they can't conceive. So yeah, it's such a, it's such a crazy thing. There's so many components to it. Well, I mean, in the infertility rates are starting to go up. There, well, you know, but there's a lot of things, right? Infer- infertility is, is going uh, up. Testosterone, birth, testosterone and men are dropping rapidly around the world. Birth rates are dropping. Yes. More and more people are delaying wanting to have children until an older age. age. That doesn't help the equation. No, because you have more problems. Well, I mean, it's just the way our bodies are built. I mean, fertility is on the rise because most women are waiting until they're well into their 30s to have a child. And I mean, and I mean, look, I hate this because as a woman, right, there's a feminist component to this that gets on my nerves. But biologically, the reality is we're meant to have kids in our teens. We're meant to have children at a very young age because that is when we are at our prime to do so. To do so. And it's kind of, it's bullshit, right? But and, and again, but this is how in the world you keep on getting these the, the top one percent with all these twenty yeah. something year old women is mm-hmm. it is the it's the same biological function going on. Yeah, and it just it sucks because, you know, from a societal standpoint, that just does not work in our society anymore because it, right? It's changed. Like, okay, look, we look back at the ancestors. If we go back to the Celts, right? If you had a baby at 16 or 17, you weren't raising that child alone. You had an entire clan, a village stepping up to help rear. Well, again, we, we have lost the clan oh, completely. lifestyle. If we bring, if, if families would go back to clan living, we would be a know. whole lot better. I, but I don't know about because I don't know how realistic that is for modern society and for people's endeavors. I think I as an ideal, sure. But I guess, I mean, I guess realistically, right, if you did have three or four generations of families living together or living in close proximity and the youngest generation brought a child into the world that mother would still have the opportunities to pursue careers and right you know other things because education. you because then you have families and stuff yes. around you to help you but also you say but then what i don't know though because then what does it do on the trickle down in the other direction you know do that's it's rough it's rough it becomes a much less ambitious society as a result it's it's hard it, yeah <laughs> but we are where we are but we right? are where we are <laughs> and so i think fertility magic has become much more common right with um with everything that's going on yeah because people are in many instances desperate to get pregnant but you can't negate the sex magic piece of that no. because you need it to fuel the fire, literally, <laughs> right? Um, and there, there, there's two other things I think that are important here. One is let's not confuse love spells with sex magic. They're two very different things. things. And often the younger someone is and they're dabbling in those things, oh boy, yeah, they get them all mishy-mashy. And it's kind of a mess. And you really have to ask yourself, what is it that you're wanting? Do you really want a love match with this person or are you just lusting? Right. But, you know, we don't do that when we're young. No. Yeah. We kind of missed the vote on that one. Uh, And then the other thing is with sex magic, what are the repercussions? Because. Because I've seen a couple of situations where at least one of the individuals involved never recovers, meaning they are stuck on that person yeah. that they performed sex magic with for forever. They pretty much can never replicate it. Nope. And oh yeah it's it's almost devastating like they almost go celibate afterwards yes because they're like how can i ever it's never going to live up to that ever no. again and especially that first time uh, yeah i mean yeah. if you do it right i mean yeah yeah you, you, you're yeah. with me yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah no i mean it's intense 
You know, it's also really funny because I think sometimes people look at the pagan, uh, I don't know, pagan sex lives and they just, they think really highly of our sex lives. They do. And I don't know, I kind of find that funny. I do too. Like. What they say we're doing, these orgies and sex magics and all this. Yeah. But the reality is. No, not really. No, and I mean, there's always the few, like, right, we were labeled sexual deviants, obviously. Right. Which, I mean, okay, if you're a deviant because you say that sex is a healthy component of an adult lifestyle, I mean... No, I think the Christian's problems with us with sex is that all acts of pleasures... Uh... We don't deny the pleasure part of it. They see sex as only for reproduction. Yeah. Also, that is actually a really good point. There are many religions that believe God is absent in the bedroom. Right. Right? Like, it's still supposed to be chaste. Like, I mean, there's some crazy crap where, like, people cover their heads yeah, uh, no, I know it's uh, gross. Yeah. It's so gross. It's like <laughs> like we're getting it's like Handmaid's Tale, you know, yeah, kind of right. It's yeah, because there's still the belief that the act of sex is dirty or sinful or, or, or whatever, disgusting. What, but yet, it's necessary. It's a part of life, right? So it makes no goddamn sense. I mean, None of us would be here without it. Well, we're also going back to the garden, right? We're going right. back to Adam and Eve. And the fact that they were running around buck naked till, you know, they were told they were naked. And all of a sudden it was like, oh, oh. you know, who cares? That's the thing. We don't, we tend to not have those hangups. I, sometimes I liken a group of pagans, especially when they're comfortable with one another, to um, the medical community. Yeah. Right. I have plenty of friends in the medical community that are like, I can't tell you how many penises I have seen and touched that are not my significant others. Like, there's no, right? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like every military man I've ever met. I, he's seen more. Yeah. Swinging dicks. <laughs> and, yeah. I mean, but there's nothing sexual about it. No. There's nothing. It's all, it's more clinical. I don't know. We, we just don't really give a damn. No. And that's hard for some people to understand. I mean, we as a group, and I mean, I've seen this not just with our group. I mean, anywhere you go, if there's a large ritual and there's a lot of people and space is limp, we all just start changing. Yes. Wherever we are, people are dropping trow and, you know, Mm. putting on robes and because we don't care. I mean, because the worst thing you're going to say is what? Got you take off your shirt, you put your robe on, then you reach up underneath there, you drop your pants. But either way, either even, way, even if still. somebody chose to stand there in the buff for a second, we don't mm-hmm. give a crap. No. And yet there are there are some people who are kind of prude about the whole thing, but but we don't. Eh. But it's not like we're sitting there pointing them out either. No, you, but you, it's, you, it's you also do what makes you make you comfortable. It's in no way, shape, or form related to sex. No. So now, of course, the caveat to that is we still have you know the great right. Yep. And there are many instances of groups that still practice it. I would like to think that the majority are doing so in private. After the ritual, a priest and a priestess who are a couple or whatever their dynamic is, yes. they're going off and doing their thing, fulfilling it. Yeah. Yes. In some beliefs, the the ritual is not complete without it. Yeah, until that takes place. Now, I can understand that. I mean, Lord Men used to said it was. It used to be the high priest and priestess would go for it mm-hmm. in the middle of the circle, mm-hmm. and everybody was told if they didn't want to see, turn, turn your back. Yep. And I mean, we're, we're also not at that point talking about a prolonged. No. No. This, you know, again, it's a very purposeful act. I'm not even sure if it's done to the completion. It's just. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I think it depends on the two of them. But 
there's a lot. There's a lot that goes into that. And I do think that pagan couples especially tend to get a little too caught up in it sometimes. Yeah. In an unnecessary fashion. Um, I think as long as you have a healthy sex life, that's all that really matters. What's missing? You know what I mean? Right. What, are, what else are you trying to make happen? It's kind of silly. And, and as we know, the gods weren't very... Um, <laughs> but look, look, the gods are humorous to begin with because, oh, again, we, you have to remember the same drive that uh, allow men to go out and kill animals yeah, and yeah, stuff is yeah. the same thing that gets us in the bed. What they, I mean, my point, but my point there is the gods had a lot of sex. Oh, God, yes. There's so many stories. I mean, I don't, I can't think of a single pantheon, a single deity that yeah that it's just not it, well for the longest time when Jesus. i was when i was younger i used to think all stories of zeus started out with him seducing right, somebody right who did he have sex with yeah or <laughs> or who did he force himself on or who did he charm into his bed jesus is the only figure in my knowledge maybe buddha who are considered celibate or pious yeah. In that way. And I and I mean, and again, it's almost that it, it's not ever really confirmed. It's just not talked about. Yeah, I know. I always find that funny. I always get a giggle out of that. I mean, then we get into the Mary Magdalene theories and, you know, right. was she really his wife? Was she his girlfriend? I mean, mm. clearly she was sexually experienced. So, you know, so, well, who knows? Well, then there's an argument that the prostitute story was fake. Was yes. fake. Yes, that it was made up. Absolutely. I do think it's highly unlikely, living as long as he did in that time, that he was celibate, which then almost begs the question, why? Well, think, think about it this way. Moms now are still looking at their uh, kids going, you need to have a kid. Yeah. You, you need to get married to have right. a kid. Do you, do you think it was any less back then? That's my point. Jewish women are all about having grandbabies. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I can't imagine, which then, of course, yeah, I mean, that gets us down a whole different rabbit hole. Was he gay? What a thought. Right? Gay Jesus. That would make really? me so happy. <laughs> I would be so happy about gay I, I, Jesus. Actually, I don't believe that. I actually just, yeah, I, I don't really either. believe that if, I don't if, if anything he was married to, yeah, Mary Magdalene. I know. I think it was just very hush hush. Yeah. But also, that is an interesting point. There is gay sex magic. Yes. There's sex magic of all kinds. Yes. I think it's just a matter of, again, is it responsible? Is it ethical? And are consensual? all parties consenting? Yes. And for the love of God, take it slow. Like, yes. don't try to do all the things all at once. Like, there's some wild... Well, there is, that, that there is a part of sex magic. There is a buildup. So mm -hmm. this is not something mm -hmm. you're going to go... This is not a 15-minute trip. No. This is a whole seduction. There is a really <laughs> wild exercise, and I know we've used it in some of our classes in the past, where you just sit across from someone and look at them. Yes. That's it. That's it. Right. How long can you hold eye contact? How long can you communicate silently, touching each other without touching each other through right. a distance barrier? I mean, it's like, yeah, these are, yeah. So take it, take it slow. It, you have plenty of time to build right. up those skills. I mean, but no, I mean, sex magic in itself, the spell it is itself yeah. could be a two or three hour process if you're Oy. doing it. <laughs> I don't have that kind of time. I got laundry to do. <laughs> Just for that, let's go get some coffee. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Join us next week for another episode. Pagan Coffee Talk is brought to you by Life Temple and Seminary. Please visit us at lifetempleseminary.org for more information, as well as links to our social media. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. We travel down this trodden path, the maze of stone and mire. Just hold my hand as we pass by a sea of blazing pyres. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks. And so it is the end of our days, so walk with me till morning breaks.